action. All right, so yeah, we'll start off in the background hills. Way back here first, I want to show some atmospheric perspective. So once again, all the colors that I'm using here, that was kind of a bluish color, but with this sky, you wouldn't have any blue in there. So uh, for for a basic yellow, I'm gonna uh, or green, I'm gonna add the yellow in here. Dot of black, not too much though. Spin it up, and you get this nice earthy green. Where's my black? There it is. Ooh, earthy. Nice. So it's kind of like a little uh, brownish green. Then I'll add some permanent green in there, but not too much. Okay. I'll start getting this piece of on there. I'll make it a little bit lighter so it blends in a little bit better. As it goes further back, you're gonna get more uh, more of the coverage here. So I'm gonna go like a really clean line at first on the perimeter. This is one brush stroke, which you don't wanna do, uh, but I'm just getting it laid out there. After you have the, the color kind of on there, you want to use very small strokes following the contour of the hills as well. Now I'll kind of gray it out with maybe a little more brown and even some burnt sienna in there. All right, so I'll have some of the sky color in there as well. A little bit brown, a little bit of green. Mixing it up there. And because it's closer to the sky, it's going to be like these colors plus the sky colors that so I'm gonna go back in a little more raw sienna even that's got the brown base right there that you're seeing go on and on the top I want this to get even closer to the uh, sky color get a little bit of more of the yellow ochre which is the sky color so you kind of see that how it's starting to blend in a little more of the sky My brush strokes I'm painting kind of fast However, the strokes themselves are really small. The brush is going back and forth fast. With small strokes, it looks like it took you a little while to paint. And I'll come all the way over here and get that base going. And once again, this is up for the Mark Ryden Hill. Right now, I don't have a lot of color changes, so I'm gonna go back in and uh, change colors now. I got some that went over that tree a little bit. Sorry, Mr. Tree. I'll go back in here a little burnt sienna. All primed up, ready to go. Like a little blob of burnt sienna there. And then I'll like feather it out a little bit. I could even add some orange, but that might be too bold, too barren, too daring. Now I'm adding a white to it. Make it a little bit lighter so it blends in more with the sky. And I skip around a little bit too, so just keep going and going. I'll come way over here. It's kind of like adding another hill on the hill action. Right here, got the burnt sienna going over the green. And you want your paint kind of wet too. Don't have like uh, dry paint. Your first coat can be kind of uh, thick. As you do multiple layers on your ground or whatever you're doing, uh, you want it to be a lot lighter as you go. All right, so now I'm kind of hazing that out contrast wise so it was dark I'm bringing the sky colors back on the mountain so if you have blue you might want to add more blue to your uh, background color and more of the yellow ochre over here and if I had a mountain even further away than this guy it almost looked like the sky color itself with very little green base coat and layer two is right there all right, so now I'm getting this thing on there. A little more of the scrubbing. And I'll add a little bit more white to it. Tippy tap, so it's like way too much white at first. But when I put it in there, it'll look decent. All right here, it's a highlight, but I'll add another little bump right here. So I have two highlights that'll blend in with a little more of the yellow ochre. And because the paint's you know, pretty wet, easier to blend than dry paint. <clears throat> so coming in here, feather that out a little bit, maybe get a little more burnt sienna, because now we're getting into the burnt sienna part of the sky. Stumbling techniques, so I'm not really painting like that, I'm really just kind of scrubbing it. And then, uh, yeah, don't go this speed, but uh, 
Same techniques, just different speed for you guys. All right, so then I'm gonna add in some more highlights to get more personality to it. I'll just do that by a tint. Add in almost pure white to it. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. And here, so I'm gonna go in white and burnt sienna. Right here, it's almost the same color as the sky. Tap that out a little bit. So now I have a little tiny hill on the hill. It's kind of cute. It's like a little baby hill. All right, so you can see it. when you add the extra levels to it, it'll look a lot better. And more burnt sienna. And here I'll add some more with a little bit of a tint of white as well. And like I said, you could even add orange if you wanted to. All right, so you can see how you build it up with layers. So it's not really thick at all. It's kind of thin, thin layers, almost like glazes, more or less. For a base coat, it can almost be done. So it's like this color plus sky is going to be this color. And uh, dip it in a little more burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is great when you want to add atmospheric perspective if you have this kind of sky. Right here, almost so you could, if this was a blue sky, you could be doing like light blue for the highlights. Okay, and that's about it. All right, background hills are done for that level. Now, there's no real trees in the background, but just in the reference, I'll add some so you can see some depth in there or perspective. And I'll take a small round brush. Trees will be kind of greenish, a lot more of the atmospheric color as well. So go green, plus burnt sienna, and gray it out. A titch, make it a little bit darker. With these trees off in the distance here, look at about that value so they don't have like tons of contrast in there. Tap those out, little village trees. Small singular brush strokes. Flatten out the bottom using your pinky or your finger, I mean. I'll do another cute little tree set up here. And so you gotta be careful with the trees too. I have different levels of them. Like connect a few so they're not like little dots sit on your uh, hill. Do another little tree section over here variety of trees so it's giving you a little bit more contrast to it darker trees but once again they don't or they won't have as much contrast as the trees in the foreground it's really important it's kind of soft the bottom of the trees up just by dragging it through with your finger so it doesn't look like they're floating a little softer right there's like a little lump take your finger Drag it through and you'll flatten out the bottom of them. I'll do another little tree here. Just because I can. All right, so now to get contrast, I have this like level of the hill right here to show um, depth and perspective. Mix up a darker green, but less brown. And to show the scale, show this, I'm gonna go dark about this value. So I'll do about that value, and then I'll start there. I'll come in here with the small round brush, small strokes following the reference for the tree shape. And I could make that even bigger if I wanted to. I think it's a decent size. I'll have like two trees. Maybe a little larger one over here. And it really gives it a lot of contrast on that. So you can see the contrast change between this and that. So trees are an excellent way to do, uh, get a lot of value changes. So if you're looking at your painting, you're going, you know what? I don't really have a lot of good contrast in here. If you don't, <clears throat> hell, just tree it. Add some trees, it'll look pretty good. Another larger tree here. Small at base, I'll have this tree even go up a little bit higher. Closer, maybe on the other side of the mountain. Scumble, and I'll let some of the light show through as well. So it's not exactly a solid tree. 
once again, this magic show speed goes slower, but same process. Now, I'm about ready to go some details in this thing. And being able to see the light coming through, like right in here, that's super important with faraway trees. Stumble a little bit. I'll add another one over here. I'll do a little baby tree kind of thing. Be kind of cute. All right, so now this, watch the sky. So right now it's solid, right? Got a solid lump. Now I'll come in there, I'll add some gaps. So you can see the sky showing through a little bit, or I should say the mountain. And over here, I'll add some more details to that as well. All right, so then those two trees are done for the base coat. But now I'm going to add some highlights. Highlights for back there are not going to be just bright green because they're going to be expect, affected by the sky. Add a little more of the yellow ochre into it. Some of the light green, but not tons. Then I'll come in here and I'll just add some of the highlights on part of it. So I'll use the side of the brush, tapping it on there. It'll look like it's more form to it. A little bit over here as well. Tap it with your finger. Move over here, a little more highlights. And that should take you about a period to do all what I've done so far. About an hour. Okay. Now we got highlights over there as well. See the highlights on there. So the highlights really help it out. Look more three dimensional, what have you. And I'll blur this out just a titch. <clears throat> All right. So then 